Decluttering a life is something I'm starting to get into a bit more um, myself as well as encouraging others to do. Um, because I think it's not just um, about the fact is there's too much crap in the world, but also that people need to realize that it's stealing time. Um, because things like Facebook, for example, that people will like giving funny faces and stuff, what, what value is that added to your day? Um, for me, it's just crap. And I, I might get like two posts on a Facebook page that might be interesting or important in a week, but the rest of it, I don't really need to see. And, and to be honest, if it's important, why haven't they just emailed me? Um, so. I've started moving away from all that social waste of time networking um, because I know on an internet basis people are always pushing it down your throat that it, you have to have an internet presence for Google Plus and then you're going to have it for Facebook and you're going to have it for Twitter. And <laughs> reality is if people know how to contact you, they use that route. Um, what would you put on Facebook? Email me? Um, because that's the, that's the thing is you need to declutter and one of the things I've started doing is removing um, a lot of the stuff that wastes my time on the internet. One of those, one of those being um, I receive a lot of emails from Indian and Pakistani networkers. Uh, they're, they're predominantly trying to sell me something or want something from me, but the fact is they're, they don't actually have anything I need or want or add value to. And I'm not being racist when I say this, that it is them. Um, I don't get the same from Filipinos, I don't get the same from the UK, I only get it from them. Um, I, I mean, okay, we have our own call center, but it doesn't give me a right for, uh, for India and Pakistan to send me 50 to 100 emails a day or not to crap. Um, you know, they're selling, trying to sell you something there where they talk somebody into uh, a contract for doing something, they cut it by 50% and expecting you to pick up the other, uh, do all the work for the other 50%. They can go to hell. Um, I'm not interested. So, what I've done is I've simply started blocking, deleting, and banning certain countries from uh, sending me responses and stuff. Uh, because I don't need it. Um, I can't see um, opportunities coming from people from within those areas except for people I already know. Um, because I'm not looking to expand that network in that area. I have no interest in it. It's constantly shouting at me, talk to me, talk to me. Um, but I don't want to listen. Um, so with that I've actually removed somewhere like 50 to 80 e emails a day. Um, from those types of people. The next was all the newsletter stuff. Um, because I get a lot of emails from blogs and things that I should have deleted a long time ago, um, but I spent a bit of time removing, blocking, banning, whatever it needs to do. Because I do. when I leave something, I don't need them then to send an email saying, oh, you've left us, can you, wh why did you leave us? No, I don't want to fill in a survey. I'm gone, that's it. I'm not interested. The excessive marketing on, online has got beyond irritating. Um, so all that stuff is now going. Um, and I've gained probably one to two hours a day easily um, by decluttering that side of things, the internet side, um, and my email, and my telephone numbers. If you don't dial me with um, a proper telephone number, you know, if you're on the voice over IP, I won't answer it. It doesn't even come to me. Um, I'm removing all the junk because uh, there is no reason for anybody to be contacting me that hasn't even got the decency to give me a real telephone number. Um, it's just the way I'm progressively changing the way I work to make life easier for me and the hours I gain back here means I have more time with my family and more productive work times. The next thing I did was 
um, I've dropped a lot of my blogs. Um, simply, I've seen that they consume more time than they're worth. Um, I still have a few of the, the ones that generate money. They'll still keep going, but at the same time, I've started some fresh ones which are purely money orientated. Um, the cash generators and nothing else. Um, I'm not even doing them. Um, I'm getting some of my guys here to learn how to do it. Um, I'll coach them in how to set it up, how to populate it, how to run it. And they're going to be running um, some of this stuff for me. Why am I doing it? Well, first thing is I want to teach the guys um, improved uh, blog writing and also getting familiar with the software. Having some of these junk sites, what I call junk sites, because they're not, they're not sites that I would uh, sell. They're, they're sites that can generate revenue, but they're not really, um, they're not really a, a site I'd be interested in for any other reason. Um, they're, they're designed around sales. And they're, they're, they're pushing reviews, that sort of stuff. So for, from that perspective, they are not really, um, they're not really something I'll be writing on myself. The most I'll get involved is probably setting them up initially. But that's all about decluttering my life because I'm decluttering what I would have sat and spent like 20 hours a month on or more building up and getting the agents here to do it for me. Because a site only costs about $10 a year. Um, and like with Shades of Grey, which was that uh, women's magazine thing, book, um, I bought a domain, put 10 articles on it, and then just left it with Amazon on it. <laughs> How hard could it be to make a profit uh, over $10 in a year? The answer is it, it actually made, I don't know, four or $500. Well, if you can replicate that with different sites in a different, in a similar way, it's very easy to make money. Um, I'm, not, I'm not expecting these to make an absolute fortune. They're not designed to make an absolute fortune. As a group, they're designed to make money, though. Um, which is why I've also started automating a lot of stuff. I've got sites that actually have automated payout and everything else. I don't actually do anything except an email to say, uh, get her an email that's, that says, hey, you've been paid, and the odd customer service one where they've had an issue, and, but beyond that, it's fully automated. And I, that's why I'm getting into this declutter thing, because um, decluttering everything gives you your time back. And I find that too many people find a reason not to do something, and not enough reasons to do it. Now, what are the reasons you can get a more positive response is by decluttering because you have A, you've got less reasons to say you can't do it, but B, because you're decluttered, um, you actually got more of an interest in building things um, because you don't have to get, hang on, I've just got to read my emails or whatever, because you got rid of them all. Um, I'm actually going to be giving my emails to my wife to, to screen as well in the future because I'm just not going to read them. Um, not, not my business one, by the way. This is for the, the general stuff. Uh, the business ones, if you're, if you got my business email address, um, then I, I do respond to them. Because uh, obviously it's a different, different ball game. Um, but you know, for the general inquiries and stuff, they go to a different email. Um, but a lot of this stuff is actually to work smarter. Um, and even with my business emails, my wife still reads those anyway. Um, I read them as well, but with the other email address, she actually reads them and deletes them and stuff. With the business one, I'll actually read them as well um, because there might be something in there that may not be relative to what my wife's seen, where it might be relative to me. Um, but at the same time, if I get a, an important message, you can actually text over a telephone number or whatever needs to call somebody if it's important. 
or a person can actually call me when it might even, my wife emails me and tells them that I'm in Leeds, for example, give me a call and they can call me back. So it's all about decluttering. Um, if, you, if you really don't, you probably sat there, you're either getting what I'm talking about or thinking this is a waste of time. But the, the, what I would say there is if it's a waste of time, you're probably like me with a lot of the stuff um, I've been reading lately is you already do a lot of this stuff already. Um, but what I'm finding is going over some of the books I'm reading, um, there's more I could do to actually make things more productive for myself, which is why I'm spending more time on it. Um, because like these videos, I could sit and learn how to do uh, a cool intro at the start and a cool ending at the, at the end. But why? I'm not really interested in the intros. I mean, how many people fast forward and when they're watching a movie? So, you know, for, for, for me, this minimalistic is probably the, the way I like to keep everything. So, that's all I'm going to say on this. It's, it's more about um, just saying and declutter stuff in your life. And it's not only about the stuff online. You, like having two telephone numbers, for example. Um, there's very few people that have my business number for the UK uh, because there's only the people that actually I do business with. The rest of the people have like Skype numbers and things like that because I can actually leave my Skype account with somebody else that can sit there and just answer the, the calls and anything's and important, they can forward them to me. The reason I've done that is a prime example of the telesales idiot that calls me for the same offer on mobile phones every day. Um, it gets rid of them because they simply don't have my number. Because um, most of them want landlines. Uh, UK is rather expensive on the telephones, so don't get get, get too many outside the UK that call me for those offers on. They don't. They call me on the uh, landlines. But nobody's got my UK landline number, um, so I don't have one anymore. Uh, but yeah, deep, having two telephone numbers, one for your personal and one for business, or one for family and one for general, it, these things just make things a bit easier for you because you can ditch half the crap um, because it never reaches you. Uh, the same that like, same with the emails. I have multiple emails for filtering out for different things, and most of them I'm handing off to different people at the moment because I used to do nearly everything myself, but I'm starting to move away from that because when I start going back to the UK very shortly, I don't have the time. But be a lot of these tasks, I want to start getting people in charge of. Um, what they call empowering, um, what I call it in the UK, delegation. Um, I'm giving them responsibility by delegating the responsibility to them. Um, so they take more control over it. Uh, for example, transcription quotes uh, for the business. They know what the, the fees are, they know what the pricing is. We're an open book here, you know. A lot of companies are so paranoid their workers will disappear and go and set up their own little transcription business, whatever. I don't care. Um, the fact is, a lot of these clients that we're starting to get would not work with people that aren't me. Um, so it's not really a problem. So that's why we're moving away from that. Uh, so yeah, the guys are starting to take more control over things themselves. Um, for me, declutters gives me more time, but also I'm going to be studying more. Um, I'm reading daily now, uh, something I should have got back into a while back. Um, but all of this is to help develop my career, but also start moving us forward again in a, a way I like. Um, because in the Philippines, I found things become a very, it's very easy to get in a rut because things are done for you too much. Um, if I want a cup of tea, somebody would make me a cup of tea. I generally like making a cup of tea, but people find it a bit awkward that you're doing it and not them. And 
The same with the Middle East. We, actually, we had tea boys. They actually, that's their job. They actually make your tea. Um, I like driving. When I had a seven hour drive to the border in Oman, um, I drove there and let the driver drive back. Um, not because I had to, but simply, I don't like feeling like I'm just sat there doing nothing. Um, I actually enjoy driving. Um, but yeah, it, it's like getting back choices um, instead of things just being removed because it's easier. Um, that's, that's one of the things I don't get with the empowerment thing. A lot of the stuff they remove, but at the same time, it's got to be in a way that actually works. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you want to do yourself anyway. Even, even if you could give it away, you'd still want to do it. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Anyway, this is another long video. Uh, thanks for listening.